Welcome to Marvelous French. French for those who are learning French or who would like to learn French. In this lesson, we're going to look at the numbers 0 through 10 in French. First, we'll go over the numbers themselves, and then we'll talk a bit about pronunciation. So with that said, let's get started. Zero. 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 Un. 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 Deux. 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 Trois. 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 Quatre. 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 Cinq. 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 Six. 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 Sept. 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 Huit. 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 Neuf. 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 Dix. 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 Now let's look at all of the numbers together. So again, we have zéro, un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit, neuf, dix, and one more time, zéro, un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit, neuf, dix. Now that we've gone over the numbers themselves, let's talk a bit about their pronunciation. The pronunciation of French numbers is a little unique. For example, consonants at the end of words tend not to be pronounced in French, but there are several exceptions here. The key at the end of the number five is pronounced, for example. Sank. Sank. The Q ending itself is very rare in French. Usually words end in Q-U-E and not just Q. The X at the end of the number six is also pronounced and sounds like S. Six. Six. The T at the end of the number seven is pronounced. Notice that the P, however, is silent. Set. Set. The T at the end of the number eight is also pronounced. Wit. Wit. The F at the end of neuf is pronounced. Neuf. Neuf. But this is actually pretty typical, as words that end in F tend to have a pronounced final consonant. Another exception, however, is the number 10, where the X is pronounced and sounds like an S. Dis. Dis. Some of these numbers also change pronunciation based on the word that follows. Let's take a look at that. So here we have the numbers 1 through 10 again, the number 0, Zero isn't included here, but it doesn't change pronunciation regardless of what follows. So to get an idea of how the pronunciation of these numbers changes based on what follows, let's take a look at how the numbers 1 through 10 are pronounced on their own in French, how they're pronounced when followed by a consonant. In these examples, we're using the word verre, V-E-R-R-E, -E, which means glass, as in the kind you drink out of. And finally, we'll look at how 1 through 10 are pronounced when followed by a vowel. That's A, E, I, O, or U. In these examples, we're using the word ami, which means friend. Before we take a closer look, notice that in the consonant column, the Q, the T, and the F at the end of 5, 5, 7, 7, and 9, 9, 
are underlined. This is to indicate that these final letters are pronounced when followed by a consonant. Now, actually, the Q in sank can sometimes be silent, but we'll look at that a little later. The rest of the number's final letters are silent if the following word starts with a consonant. For example, two glasses is de verre. The X is silent, but seven glasses is set verre. We pronounce the T. In the vowel column, you see a linking symbol between the numbers 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 10, and the word ami. This means that the final letter for these numbers is pronounced and changes sound through a process called liaison, when a usually silent final consonant is pronounced when followed by a vowel. So, for example, the final X in the number 2, de, is silent on its own or when followed by a consonant, but it's pronounced and sounds like a Z when followed by a vowel. Deux amis. The final letters for the numbers without the linking symbol are pronounced when followed by a vowel, but there's no pronunciation change. So, for example, the Q in the number 5, sank, is still pronounced k when followed by a vowel. Cinq amis. Now let's take a closer look at each number. So first we have one, which by itself is pronounced un, un, with a nasal sound. We don't pronounce the N. Now when the number one, un, is followed by a consonant, there's no change in pronunciation. So we have the example here, un verre. So un and un verre, no change. When un is followed by a vowel, however, it's no longer nasal and we pronounce the N. This again is called liaison, when a previously silent letter is pronounced when followed by a vowel. So that gives us un ami, un ami. So let's read all three examples. Un, un verre, un ami. So again, there's a pronunciation change when un is followed by a vowel. Un is no longer nasal, and we pronounce the N. One thing to note is that when un is followed by a feminine noun, it becomes une, une, U-N-E. For example, the word woman is feminine in French, so a woman is une femme, with the feminine form of un, which is une. So if we compare a man, which is masculine, to a woman, which is feminine, we get un homme versus une femme. Un versus une. Also note that even though homme, which means man, starts with the consonant H, H is silent at the beginning of words in French, and many words that start with H, though not all, follow the pronunciation rules of words that start with vowels. This is called a non-aspirated or mute H. So in this case, un, when followed by um, loses its nasal quality de liaison and is run together with um. Un um. Un um. We pronounce the N the same way we do when un is followed by a vowel, such as un ami, for example, a friend. Other words that start with H, like ero, H-E-R-O-S, which means hero, it ends in an S even though it's singular, follow the pronunciation rules of other consonants. This involves what's called an aspirated H. So a hero would be un hero. Un retains its nasal quality the same way it does when followed by other consonants, such as un verre. We don't run it together with the word hero. So we have un followed by a vowel or a mute H. Un ami, un homme, versus un followed by a consonant, which can include an aspirated H. Un verre, un héros. So you want to keep that in mind. The pronunciation changes we're discussing in this lesson that applied to vowels also applied to words that start with a mute H, such as um, man. Now whether the H at the beginning of a word is a mute H or an aspirated H has to be memorized. Most dictionaries put an asterisk or apostrophe in front of words with aspirated H's. That is, H's that are pronounced separately from the word that precedes them, like ero, un ero. So if you're unsure about a word, you can consult a dictionary. Now two final notes on one. Unlike un, 
which is again the masculine form of one. Une, U-N-E, the feminine form of un, does not change pronunciation regardless of what follows. Also note that only one, and most numbers above 20 that end in one, such as 21, 31, etc., change when the noun is feminine. The other numbers remain the same regardless of the gender of the noun that follows. So there's no feminine version of the numbers 2, 3, 4, and so on. And this is because one, un, also means a, or an, which are articles that agree with the noun and therefore have a feminine form. Une. And now back to our numbers here. So we talked about the number one, and the numbers two and three both follow the same pattern. The final letter is silent unless followed by a vowel. So two when on its own is pronounced de, de with a silent X. Followed by a consonant, the X remains silent, de verre. So we have de, de verre. There's no change. When followed by a vowel, the X is pronounced and sounds like a Z. Z. Again, due to what's called liaison. So it flows better. So we have deux amis. Deux amis. So again, let's compare. Deux. Deux verres. Deux amis. So we pronounce the X in deux when it's followed by a vowel, or as mentioned earlier, a mute H. So just as two friends is deux amis, where X is pronounced like a Z, two men would be deux hommes, because um, men, starts with the mute H, which is treated like a vowel. Now just to note, you want to make sure to pronounce de with an E sound. De. De. Otherwise, when it's followed by a vowel, if you're not careful, it can sound like the number 12, which is douze, with an ou sound. Compare the pronunciation of two friends and twelve friends. Deux amis, douze amis, e, ou. And now back to our numbers. So we talked about the numbers one and two. Now the number three follows the same pattern as the number two. The final S is silent unless followed by a vowel. So three on its own is trois, trois. Followed by a consonant, it remains the same, trois vers. When followed by a vowel, however, the S is pronounced and sounds like a Z. Trois amis, trois amis. So let's compare. Trois, trois vers, trois amis. Again, the S in trois is pronounced when followed by a vowel. The number four has a slight pronunciation change when followed by a vowel. On its own, it's pronounced quatre, quatre. When followed by a consonant, there's no change, quatre vers. When followed by a vowel, however, quatre tends to be run together with the following word as if they were one. So we have quatre amis, quatre amis. We run the sounds together instead of pausing between the two words, such as quatre. Ami. So let's compare. Quatre, quatre vers, quatre amis. So again, you run quatre together with the word that follows if the word starts with a vowel. The number five is pronounced cinq with a pronounced Q when by itself and when followed by a vowel. When followed by a consonant, the Q is often pronounced. Cinq vers. But depending on the speaker or the particular word that follows, you might occasionally hear the Q dropped. Cinq vers. There are also some instances where the Q is more or less likely to be pronounced when followed by a consonant. For example, when five is used in dates, the Q is often pronounced. Le cinq mai, May 5th. However, with the number 500, the Q is less likely to be pronounced. Cinq cents. Now, this may be because the Q sound naturally flows more easily with certain letters, or it may be down to individual pronunciation ticks. But in general, we can say that the pronunciation of the Q in the number 5 before a consonant is technically optional, but most of the time it will be pronounced. So we have cinq, cinq vers, cinq amis. The number 6 actually has three possible pronunciations, one for each case. 
on its own, six is pronounced cis. Cis. The X is pronounced and sounds like an S. When followed by a consonant, the X is silent. Siver. Siver. When followed by a vowel, the X is pronounced, but now sounds like a Z, again due to liaison. Six amis. Six amis. So we have six, six verres, six amis. The X sounds like an S when six is on its own. The X is silent when followed by a consonant. And the X sounds like a Z when followed by a vowel. The pronunciation of the number seven remains the same in all cases, with a silent P and a pronounced T. Set. Set. So we have set, set ver, and set ami. So there are no pronunciation changes regardless of what follows. As for the number eight, the final T is pronounced when eight is alone or followed by a vowel. It's silent when followed by a consonant. So we have huit, huit, but huiver, huiver. Again, the T is silent when followed by a consonant. But huit ami, huit ami. We pronounce the T before a vowel. So in summary, that gives us huit, huiver, huit ami. So again, the final T is pronounced when eight is alone or followed by a vowel. When followed by a consonant, the T is silent. The number nine changes pronunciation when followed by a vowel due to liaison. On its own, it's pronounced neuf, neuf, with a pronounced F. When followed by a consonant, it's also pronounced neuf, neuf ver, neuf ver. When followed by a vowel, the F is pronounced like a V. Nevami, nevami. So if we compare, we have neuf, neuf ver, nevami. We pronounce the F as is when neuf is on its own or followed by a consonant, but the F sound becomes a V before a vowel. And then finally we have ten, which rhymes with and works like the number six. On its own, ten is dix, dix. The X is pronounced and sounds like an S. When followed by a consonant, the X is silent. Diver, diver. And when followed by a vowel, the X is pronounced and sounds like a Z due to liaison. Dix amis, dix amis. So that gives us dix, diver, dix amis. Again, as with the number six, six, we pronounce the X like an S when dix is on its own. The X is silent when followed by a consonant, and the X is pronounced like a Z when followed by a vowel. So let's take one last look at the pronunciation of these numbers. So we have un, un verre, un ami, deux, deux verres, deux amis, trois, trois verres, trois amis. Quatre, quatre vers, quatre amis. Cinq, cinq vers, cinq amis. Six, six vers, six amis. Sept, sept vers, sept amis. Huit, huit vers. Huit amis. Neuf. Neuf vers. Neuf amis. Dix. Dix vers. Dix amis. And that concludes our lesson on the numbers zero through ten. Feel free to go back to the beginning of this video and listen to the numbers as many times as you need to. We'll of course look at the remaining numbers in following lessons, but in the meantime, if you found this video helpful, please feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And once again, this is Meredith with Marvelous French, and as always, à la prochaine! See you next time!